Thank you, Mr. Brown. If, if I could take a few minutes to, to count some time, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come speak to y'all today. Uh, I would like to kind of introduce y'all to who Rolling Thunder is. I know a lot of people hear the name and don't really know what we do. Uh, General George Washington in 1789 made the following statement. The willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any war, no matter how justified, shall be directly proportional as to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their country. In 1987, a group of Vietnam veterans who had served honorably were deeply troubled by the neglect of attention given to those who didn't make it home alive or with their freedoms. At this time, there had been approximately 10,000 sightings of live Americans living in dismal captivity. These were generally ignored by the government and the mainstream press. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 1988, these men decided to have their rights and have their voices heard and demonstrated at the nation's capital. Their arrival would be announced by the noise of their motorcycles not unlike the 1965 bombing campaign against North Vietnam, dubbed Operation Rolling Thunder. Hence that little name and title would wear and be trademarked in 1990. The 1988 protest brought 2,500 motorcycles to protest and demand a full accounting of all our POWs and MIAs. That day, the foundation was laid for the current ride to the wall on Memorial Day. In 2009, we had in excess of 970,000 motorcycles and 1. million people in attendance. This is a protest that is not a party. We're wanting full accountability of all of our people. Rolling Thunder Incorporated is not a motorcycle club, although we do ride them. We have members who are state workers, retired school teachers, current teachers, past law enforcement, veterans, non-veterans, uh, some ride motorcycles, trikes, cars, trucks, antique vehicles, and at least one motor scooter. <laughs> but these old members all have something in common, and that is that every prisoner of war and missing in action has a right to be brought home. That's right. Rolling Thunder spends hundreds of thousands of dollars each year in financial aid for food and clothing to veterans and homeless vets and veterans' families in need to crisis centers and toys for children. In, 19, in 2007, Rolling Thunder Charities was established as a 5013C tax exempt nonprofit organization, which enables individuals and corporations to receive tax donations for funds donated to Rolling Thunder. No officers of Rolling Thunder receive any compensation. We all donate our time. 100% of donations go directly to veterans. Mm -hmm. Rolling Thunder Inc. and sponsor search missions in the Southeast Asia for POWs and NIAs and remains of those killed in action. Uh, last year, just over $500,000, we donated to the Joint POW MIA Accounting Committee, which is known as JPAC. JPAC has the largest DNA forensics lab in the world. They're in Florida, excuse me, and Hawaii, responsible for uncovering the crash site of Thomas Wright Jr. Uh -huh. Rolling Thunder Inc. members of local VA hospitals nationwide log in thousands of hours. Members visit to provide moral support to nursing home veterans and patients suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Rolling Thunder is involved in legislation. We have had a number of pieces of legislation passed to help veterans and in their activities. Currently, we are trying to push through House Resolution 111, which we've been trying to do since 2007. This would establish a select committee on field WMI affairs, which would do away with the numerous committees and subcommittees and joint committees of field WMI activities. This committee would be conduct a full investigation of all unresolved, unresolved matters relating to any United States field WMI unaccounted for from the Iraqi War, Afghanistan, the Gulf War, Vietnam, the Korean War, Cold War, and World War II. As we talk about POWs, how many here knew that we have two? One from Iraq, one from Vietnam, excuse me, one from Afghanistan that are currently being held. Sergeant Lloyd Bergdahl from Idaho was captured in Afghanistan on June of 2009.
There are five videos that have been released of his capture and the demands from the Taliban. You will not find those videos in the United States, though they are prevalent in the United Kingdom. They are demanding $1 million in the release of uh, Afaya Sadiqis, who is a Pakistani scientist convicted for trying to kill American soldiers in Afghanistan. Ahmed Al-Tali was captured in October 2006 in Iraqi, and the ransom is $250,000. We do not hear from those. Currently, we have 83,500 listed as POW in Iraq. Rolling Thunder wants these people to return home. That's right. <clears throat> Let us remember those who have yet to come home. Let us honor them, not just on the third Friday of September, which is National Field W Recognition Day, but every day. As Calvin Coolidge stated, a nation which forgets its defenders will be itself forgotten. As for Rolling Thunder members, we will not forget. Thank you. People may have seen this and didn't know what it was. There it is. We've asked council to fly this at the county courthouse so that people, when they go by, you know, our mission is to educate people. In order to educate, you've got to be aware of something. So when you see that, you'll be aware of it, and we'll be glad to educate you. Thank you, folks.